Hello, this is Dr. Corey Ehrman, Senior Pastor of River Church in West Palm Beach, Florida. Welcome to Revival TV. I'm believing that God's gonna touch you through the program with salvation, healing, deliverance, and baptism in the Holy Ghost, amen. We also wanna invite you to come and be with us at the church. Visit our website, riverwpb.com for all the details. We have powerful children's and youth ministry. We have an accredited Bible school. We can train you for the ministry for revival. It's gonna be awesome. God is moving at the church powerfully. We wanna invite you to come and be a part of it. And once again, thank you for joining the broadcast. Enjoy the program. Amen. Everyone say this after me. I got to make room for the anointing. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 4. I'm going to read from verse 8. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman. Amplified says a rich and influential woman lived there who insisted on him eating a meal or persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. So he stopped for a meal. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Amplified says, I perceive. She perceived the anointing on this man of God. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall. Basically, let's build a second floor on the house, right? Let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room And lay down there, and then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. They are sufficient. Basically, she didn't have any natural needs. She didn't need money. She didn't need connections. She could get all of that in the natural on her own. Amen. But look at verse 14. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. That's a problem. So he said, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But, so she's struggling with actually receiving this word because I believe she was very emotional about it. It was a very sensitive topic, you know. But the woman conceived... And, and here's, the, here's the thing. The word of the Lord came to pass, even though she sort of maybe had a hard time receiving it, but actually she was ready to receive it, and I'll show you why. Yeah. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her. So here's Elisha, the prophet of God. You know, he carries the anointing. Amen. He's passing by this town, Shunem. On a regular basis, and as he's passing by this town, Shunem, he's being invited to eat at this Shunemite woman's house. Now, we don't know her name, but we call her the Shunemite woman. Amen. The Shunemite woman. So 
So as he's passing by, the Shunammite woman is feeding the prophet and getting to, of course, sit at the table and hang around the man of God. Now, the man of God is carrying the anointing. So it's not just a, a person that's coming to sit at the table. It's actually the man of God that's coming, the anointing that's coming to the house, to the table. Amen. Amen. For a few hours. But she begins to pursue, perceive something. Something is different here. There's an anointing on this man. And we need to tap into this anointing. And without even maybe realizing it, because I don't believe that, you know, maybe she's not in her heart thinking about a son. But she wants to go above and beyond what they've already done. So she talks to her husband about building a second floor on the house. Okay, so now, listen, now for a few weeks, we've been talking about here the law of honor. Okay, you cannot receive from an anointing you don't honor. You cannot receive from a ministry you don't honor. Amen. But when you do perceive the anointing, when you do perceive that the power of God can actually flow through a man of God or a ministry, one way you tap into it is by partnering with that ministry, with that anointing. So... Our giving is not just plunking a bucket or our giving is not just putting something in a bucket to pay bills. Our our giving is actually about connecting with an anointing. And guess what happens when you connect with the anointing? That anointing is going to be released. You begin to tap into the anointing. So giving, you know, feeding the man of God was wonderful, but now she... They've, they go above and beyond to actually build a second floor on the house, furnishing it for the man of God so that he can come and stay not just for a few hours for a meal, but she can come, he can come and stay a few days, a few weeks. And he's been out ministering, you know, and he comes and he's going to lie to rest, but he can't rest. You know why? Because something is stirred in the realm of the spirit. And he's like, Something must be done for this woman. That's coming from the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can't partner with the anointing and not receive from the anointing. Because as she began to go above and beyond to honor this anointing, now that anointing is going to begin to move on her behalf. And so here's a man of God. Understand prophets don't know everything. Right? They only know what the Lord shows them. So the only thing Elisha is picking up in his spirit is, hey, something needs to be done for this woman. I'm picking up in my spirit, but he doesn't really know what it is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And so there's, that's why there's a flow. Everyone say a flow. a flow. There's a flow to how the anointing works. We, we know in part, we prophesy in part. He's picking up, hey, something is stirring in the realm of the spirit. It's like the waters have been stirred. Remember when the angel would come and stir the waters, the first person to jump in the water would be healed. So now there's a stirring. Something is about to happen. Amen. The anointing has been stirred. Because she has placed a demand on the anointing. Through going above and beyond in her giving. Amen. And she's made room for the anointing. As she made room for the man of God, an upper room, she's actually made room for the presence of God. To rest upon her house. Now the presence of God is resting upon her house. Now something must be done for this woman. What must be done for this woman? Do I need to speak to the commander of the army? Should I speak to the king? Oh no, man of God. I mean, hey, I've got influence. I've got money. I can get all of those things in the natural. But she's not telling him what she really wants and the desire of her heart. See, when... When your ways please the Lord, the Bible says, when you delight yourself in the Lord or when the way you do things delights the Lord, guess what he does? He gives you the desires of your heart. And deep down in her heart, you know she desired a child. Come on, somebody. And that would be a, that would be a miracle because only a miracle could produce that because her husband was old. That means he's unfruitful. So she needs a miracle. The commander of the army can't help. The king can't help. Her money can't help. She needs a miracle. And the anointing has been stirred. And she's standing at the doorway of her miracle. 
but she just needs to grab it. Some of you are like that. You're standing in the doorway of your miracle. If she just said, oh man of God, I desire a son, she would have grabbed it. So she's standing at the doorway of her miracle and she's kind of turning away and walking away. And then, no, 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 no. The man of God stirred. Something must be done for this woman. What must be done for this woman? Well, you know, says the, the servant of the prophet, she doesn't have a son. She doesn't have a child. And that's the greatest desire of her heart. And the Lord knew the desire of her heart. Even though she sounds like she's in unbelief, it really is the desire of her heart. And guess what? God is obligated to his word. God's word never returns void. It is impossible for you to make room for the anointing and not receive from the anointing. It's impossible for you to place a demand on the anointing and not receive from the anointing. It is impossible for you to sow into the anointing and not receive a miracle. So whatever it is you need, God knows the desires of your heart. God's going to meet the deepest desires of your heart. But you've got to make room for the anointing. And I'm telling you right now, the way you honor the anointing, giving is a... Is a big way that you honor the anointing as you honor the anointing as you honor the Word of God guess what happens the Word of God begins to move on your behalf the Word of God begins to manifest on your behalf the Holy Ghost begins to move on your behalf and God begins to fulfill the greatest and the deepest desires of your heart hallelujah but you've got to make room for the anointing the woman tapped into something hallelujah I don't know everything People come up to me all the time, Pastor, do you have a word for me? Many times I don't. But you know what? I do actually have the word. Instead of, instead of always looking for a word, let's go to the word. The word. We have the word. Hallelujah. There's an anointing on this word. God's word does not return void. It shall accomplish that which God has intended for it. The word of God will not return void. If you trust the word of God, if you, come on somebody, if you live and if you act according to, the, listen, instead of your emotions, instead of your circumstances, instead of how you feel, it, you can tap into what God has for you. There are promises in the word of God for you. And if you want to see breakthrough in your finances, you got to do things God's way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody walked into the church this morning and handed me a bag of bananas. I was looking on it. It says first fruits on it. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. You got to put God first. God has to get the best. You can't put God last and expect Him to come and put you first. But when you put God first in your life, God knows that that's how you delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the deepest desires of your heart. And there are some things locked up in some of y'all's hearts. And you'd almost kind of certain sort of given up on it. But I'm telling you right now, as you begin to stir the anointing, those things that are the deepest desires of your heart, God will begin to move on your behalf. You begin to see those desires of your heart shall be fulfilled God will begin to do miracles God will begin to do the supernatural hallelujah some of you are just standing on the doorway of your miracle it's time for you to press in it's time for you to step right in and grab a hold of it God's got things for you in store God's got big things for you hallelujah he's gonna fulfill the desires of your heart glory to God we're so glad you're joining Revival TV broadcast today. We hope that you're being blessed. And we want to invite you to become a financial partner with the ministry by sowing into the harvest, sowing into revival. If you will go to riverwpb.com give, you'll be able to find all the different ways of giving and all the information is there for you. We want to invite you to pray about it, sow into the harvest, sow into souls, and we pray that God will bless you for your generous gift to the ministry. Thank you once again for your generosity, and thank you for joining the broadcast. You don't need a man. You need the anointing. And the man was standing there by the pool at Bethesda, and he, says, he said to Jesus, I don't have a man. And Jesus is like, if you only knew who is standing right here, your miracle is standing right here. 
Your healing is standing right here. Your breakthrough is standing right here. All he had to do was just reach out and touch the hem of his garment. And some of you, the reason you have stopped giving, you have stopped believing, is because some people disappointed you. And let me tell you, it's a plan of the enemy for you to be disappointed. God has appointed you onto greatness. God has appointed you. I don't care if man has disappointed you. God has appointed you. God has appointed you. God has anointed you. It's time for you to rise up. Take a hold of the things of God. And stop looking to people. Some of you are in the boat. Man, maybe I could, if somebody could just speak to the mayor for me. If somebody just could speak to this big man of God, this big name preacher for me. What you need is the anointing. People are trying to connect with big preachers, big names, big ministries. And let me see, I've seen miracles in the smallest of villages with a bunch of no-name people because they just got a hold of God. And I'm not saying God's not using mighty men of God, mighty women of God. Absolutely. But what I'm saying is you got to put your eyes on Jesus. You got to tap into the anointing. And never underestimate the power of giving. Giving is the key to your breakthrough. Hallelujah. And if you got seed in the ground, guess what? You can place a demand on the anointing. You can call in the harvest. Hallelujah. You can call in the harvest. You can believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let those disappointments, disappointments just fall off. Come on. Some of you just need to let go of those disappointments. Come shake. Some of y'all just need to shake off those disappointments. And get, get reappointed back in the plan and purpose of God for your life. Because you thought that it was going to happen through this man. It was going to happen through this woman. It was going to happen through this boss and this business connection or this friend or whatever you were looking for. And it didn't happen. And God is saying, why are you looking upon people? Why do you have your eyes on people? Look upon me, the author and the finisher of your faith. Look upon me. Hallelujah. All you need is a word from him to begin to walk on the water of the supernatural. One word, one word from God will change everything. He said, come, and Peter begin to walk on the water. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. Take your eyes off of circumstances, the winds and the waves. Hallelujah. Take your eyes off of circumstances. Take your eyes off of people. Hallelujah. If you've been disappointed, welcome to planet earth. Sometimes it's, your it's the people that are closest to you. And that's actually what the enemy will try to do. There'll be a Judas in the inner circle. But guess what? The plan and purpose of God shall be fulfilled. Because it's not dependent upon man. It's dependent on you believing God. It's dependent on you grabbing a hold of His anointing, His Word. It's dependent on you releasing your faith. Some of you, like I said, I'm telling you, I feel that so strongly. Some of you are standing right there in the doorway of your miracle. Some you standing right there in the doorway of your miracle. mundo. <laughs> Randa Malatiasa Cobra. Oh, get ready. Get ready. In the rest of this year, God's going to begin to, hallelujah, fulfill the desires of your heart. The rest of this year is going to be a fulfillment of the desires of your heart. Things that have been appointed for 2023. There have been things ordained and appointed in the plan and purpose of God for your life in this very Kairos moment. In this very season you're stepping into, God has things that are appointed for you 
put your eyes on the Lord. Hallelujah. You shall see it. You shall see it manifest. You shall see it come to pass. You shall see the manifestation of the glory of God. You shall see the manifestation of the power of God. You shall see the manifestation of miracles, signs and wonders. God's going to begin to move on your behalf. And the very thing you thought was dead is about to be resurrected. The very thing. The very thing. That's why I don't care what man says. When I have a word from God, when I have a word from God, I just, I just take a hold of that word from God. I don't care what man says. One word from God will change everything. Hey! Glory to God. I'm not moved by what man says. They can run their mouth all they want. They can share their opinions all they want. I got the word of the Lord. I'm standing on the word. The unfailing rock of the word. The unfailing rock of the revelation of the word of God. My spirit is charged and energized by the word. The spirit of faith is stirred in me. I'm marching on to victory. You're marching on to victory. Great victory shall be manifested. Great victory shall be manifested. Hallelujah. And I'm hearing this in my spirit. God's going to take some of you right back. Oh, shaka randambo. God's going to take some of you right back to, your, to the place of your greatest defeat. And He's going to give you the greatest victory you've ever seen in your life. Ha! Ah! Woo! Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Hey! And he's going to rub it in the face of the devil. He's going to rub it right in his face. He'll triumph over him. Making a spectacle of him. And many shall see the manifestation of the glory of God. Where you failed in the flesh, you will succeed in the spirit. Where you have failed in the flesh, where you have failed because you trusted in the arm of the flesh, you shall succeed because you shall walk in the spirit. And you shall do it not by might, not by power, but by his spirit you shall do it. You shall succeed. You shall succeed in the very thing that he spoke to you. And maybe things didn't work out the first time around, second time around, the third time around. Guess what? <laughs> At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. But it didn't work out the first time around. You try to do it in the flesh. God's going to step in. Because you're going to stir the Spirit of God. Once the Spirit of God is stirred, there's no going back. Once the anointing has been released, no man, no devil in hell can stand in the way. No man can shut the door that God has opened. See the woman? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Listen, 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 listen. I see this. They built the upper room. And the woman's there. She opens the door for the man of God. Little did she realize that she was opening the door of her miracle. And God opened the door and no man can shut it. Hallelujah. There's an open door. His name is Jesus. It's time for you to step across the open door. Don't doubt it anymore. He loves you. He has great plans for you. Um, 
I'm telling you right now, God's doing something. Hey, 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 hey. I remember a season in my ministry back in the 2000s. A church in Istanbul was growing. And there was a, a group of leaders I was raising up. And I said one day, it's these people that will help me to go where I'm going. And within a year, every one of them were gone. And the Lord said, oh, you were looking to them instead of looking to me? I learned my lesson. I got my eyes on Jesus. I don't trust in the arm of the flesh. And I learned a while ago, disappointment is, an, is a weapon of the enemy. Because God has appointed you. The enemy will try to get you disappointed to take you out of the call of God, the will of God, the plan and purpose of God for your life. Hello, this is Dr. Corey Ehrman. Thank you for joining the broadcast. I want to give an invitation right now. Maybe you have never given your life to Jesus. You've never made him the Lord of your life. My friend, let me ask you a question. If you were to die this very second, breathe out your last breath, are you absolutely sure beyond the shadow of any doubt that you will go to heaven? If you are not sure, I bring you good news. And I want to tell you that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of decision. God is waiting for you to make a decision. He's done all that He needs to do. Jesus died for you on the cross. He shed His blood for you. He's coming back again for you. And now you need to receive Him. And if you are ready to receive Him right now, I want you to just close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I repent of all my sins and I ask you to forgive me. Come into my heart right now. Wash me and cleanse me. Fill me and change me. Let me never be the same again. I confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He died on the cross for me. He rose from the dead for me. He's coming back again for me. And that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you pray that prayer with me, I want to tell you very, very good news. I want to tell you that all of your sins are forgiven you right now, and you are now a child of God on your way to heaven. Isn't that wonderful news? We want to hear from you. Write us and let us know if you prayed with us. We also have things that we can send to you to help you to grow in your spiritual walk. Continue to join us on the broadcast. We love you. God bless you.